Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to be playing with velvet, a regular velvet and a crushed velvet. I'm gonna be using the regular velvet for the heel and the toe and also the cuff and then I'm gonna use the Bernat crushed velvet for the just main section. So together it's going to look amazing. So without further ado you're gonna need a four millimeter size G6 and a five millimeter size H and we're gonna begin to work on this together. This is an easy stocking for you to be able to complete. So without further ado let's get started. With the larger size hook a five millimeter size H you're going to create a slip knot to begin. Insert that onto the hook and I need you to chain a total of 43. So one, two, three, four, five and go all the way to 43 with me and just meet me back here in just a moment. Now that we have 43 done we're gonna go second chain from the hook and all we're just gonna do is just turn it over and get the back hump of the, the chain and once you get the first one it's just easier to see the rest because the chain will naturally wanna turn over onto itself. So just patiently going across just one single crochet in each one of the stitches all the way and so if you're going second chain from the hook and you started with 43 you should end up with 42 stitches left by the end. So I make sure that you count and get your 40, uh, make sure there's 42 and then that will, should work out for you. So just go all the way across for me. This yarn is fantastic. I can't wait to get across. Now that I'm all the way across I went right to the end. So the next two rows of two and three are going to be a repeat pattern. So in row number two we're going to chain up three and that counts as your first double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in each of the stitches across. And in row number three we're just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet across. And we're gonna repeat uh, rows number two and three until the pattern matches uh, ten inches but you need to make sure that you finish on row number two. So if uh, you go two, three, two, three, two, three and then make sure you end up on a two as your last one. So let's begin. So you're just gonna chain three and then coming to your next stitch you're just gonna double crochet and keep doing that all the way across in each one of the stitches. So this is row number two. I'm coming up to the end of row number two. Don't forget that last single crochet that's in there. That's where people go wrong and they start making triangles by accident. So then turn your work. So row number three just simple just chain up one starting in the very first one. So remember when you if you're new to crochet if you chain up three you immediately jump to the next one generally. If you're chaining up for a single crochet you chain up one and go in the top one that you're starting out of and you're gonna do that all the way across and then you're just gonna keep repeating through row number two and three and you need to make sure that you're getting ten inches and make sure that you end up on row number two. Okay so row number two uh, is what we're gonna be finishing off on which is a double crochet row. So let's uh, make sure that we're doing that and when I get back here I'll have my 10 inches done. I just gotta sit back and enjoy the stitch work and take my time. When I last left you we were just starting to build up onto the 10 inches so you're just gonna take a tape measure and just do 10 and you can see it's pretty close. So you wanna finish on row number two which is the double crochet row and then we're going to just fasten off this yarn, yarn and weave in the ends. So it's going to just tell you in the next part that you wanna start on the right side. So how are you gonna tell? See what this is here, the strand. This here is on the left if you're right handed and it will be on the right if you're left handed. So uh, what I did is here just to make sure is that I put a stitch marker here on the top so if it turns over you can see that I'm on the wrong side. So when we go to start the next part here we're going to be starting on the right side so you wanna make sure that your tail is in the right spot so that you can identify that if you need to. So let's uh, begin to do the next section right now. So we're looking at the right side of the project. I can tell by the stitch marker and where the tail is because uh, I'm right handed and what I want to do is that I wanna go to the 33rd stitch across. So if you can't see the stitches on the top just you can just kinda pull them apart and see the double crochets. So let's go to the 33rd one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 and 33rd. So the 33rd stitch is where I wanna go. I'm just putting a, uh, a hook there just to hold and I'm going to just with my larger hook still uh, five millimeter size H right where I marked it is where I wanna go. So I'm just going to go in and then I'm just going to adjust attach. So just pulling it through and you can do a standing single. So if you just pull through but don't pull the first loop you could just then pull through two and that's your first single crochet. So I want to then start this next section and let's begin. 
So continuing in the same direction I want to just continue along and what we're going to do is that I've just single crocheted in the same stitch and then I'm going to do the next nine. So let's just start in the next one. So we're gonna single crochet, go right up over top of that chain. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you notice the ninth is the last one. That means that we're right, okay? So I'm going right up over top of that, but we're not quite done yet. What I want you to do is I want you to grab the other side of this and we're gonna go right up over top of the join or right up over top of there and continue along. So we're just now going to single crochet uh, into um, the next 11. So starting on the other side. So just starting in the first stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and then hold. So now you kinda just form the circle with this by doing this and now we're just gonna go back and forth on the heel and then let's just take the heel step by step. So let's do row number one here and we're just going to turn our work and just do one single crochet, so chain one and do one single crochet into the next uh, 14 stitches. So single crochet, that includes the first one. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So you notice that we never went all the way across so we only went to fourteen and now we're gonna turn and work and begin the next row. So let's turn our work now and we're going to chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in the next seven which includes that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just like that. Okay, and now that, that row is done. We're gonna turn our work and let's begin the next row. So the trick to the heel is actually pretty simple. So you're just gonna chain up one and we're going to crochet in the ones that are there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But you're not gonna stop there. You're just gonna go back down to this one here and you're going to do that. It's your eighth, okay? Then you're going to turn your work and go back across. So we go one and starting in the first one. You don't have to count them but you just single crochet them across. And the trick is is that you go one past the one that's sitting in there in that spot. So here's the last one. So your next one is down here. And that's gonna pull that down. So pull it, make sure you pull it nice and tight when you go to do that. Then you turn your work, chain one, one single crochet in each. It's the easiest way to do the heel uh, for anything really. So where do you think you're going to go? So here's the last one and now the, la uh, the last one of that section and come down to the next one and just make sure again it's nice and tight. A single crochet and then turning your work and you're gonna see the heels starting to form. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in each. So all you just need to do is keep going back and forth and keep adding one at the end of the row until all of the gray area here or your heel has been absorbed into your project. Okay, so I'm going into the last one here and then I just go into the next one down here and again pull nice and tight when you go to do that one and then turn and etc. So please do this all the way back and forth until all of this gray area is now forming the heel and I'll be right back and we'll continue from that spot. It's a nice and easy heel to be able to manage. Okay, I've just been going back and forth as you can see. You can see the heel is actually in there now and now I've used up all my gray space so that's it. 
done. So what I want to do is that I wanna fasten off this gray here, weave in the ends and then we're gonna get ready to do the foot area. The next thing we need to do is that we need to locate the right side again. So here is my stitch marker what I have. So let's turn it back to the way it was before. So remember the tail end was down on my left here. So we know that. So it's going to say join on the actual heel area on the right side. So if this is the right side just pull it and just turn it around and when we go to join we're gonna be joining it here. Okay so it's just matching so if you can see the right side that here is on top. Let's begin to do the foot area. So to find our beginning space we're gonna start off in the very beginning one and I want you to skip the first ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So then go into the eleventh. And then with the larger hook I'm just gonna put it there. I want so we're gonna create a slip knot with the yarn that we wanna play with and right where I'm, I'm just gonna pull it just temporarily for a second and put this on here. And I'm gonna do a standing single crochet. So if I just go into the same stitch that I located and then I just yarn over and pull through but don't pull through everything just keep it so you see two loops yarn over pull through two and that's a standing single crochet. So what we want to do is that we want to continue now and we want to single crochet um, in the next ten stitches. So th this is would be considered eleven. So let's just count those out. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and the next one is ten. And what I want to do is that I wanna skip over two stitches. So in order for a heel to bend you gotta skip over so that it can cause that to happen and what you can use a tapestry needle to fill in that hole. You have that on your socks normally. So we're gonna skip over the next stitch and the next stitch and immediately just single crochet in to the next one after that. So you can come back with the tapestry needle to fill that in. I might get that when I do crochet socks as well. So what we're going to do then is that you're going to single crochet then around and I'm not even gonna bother to count because um, <laughs> I'm living uh, life on the edge and all I wanna do is that when I get to the other side here of the heel I'm going to skip the last one on this one and the first one of the gray and then continue right then back to the stitch that's just before you started. And what we're doing is that we're creating um, again another panel but with the heel already intact and uh, and then we're gonna sew then these panels shut at the end. So as they get all the way around then I'm gonna skip the, this one and then the first one of the, the gray. I'm gonna pull things nice and tight. Again you're gonna, you can fill that in with the tapestry, tapestry uh, needle later. I just start single crocheting along the remaining of the heel that's left. These uh, kind of projects are really quite forgiving especially because Christmas is coming and uh, it's a neat way of doing it. So you're gonna go right to the last one, okay, and then you're going to turn. So we're gonna maintain the pattern that we already know. So remember it was double crochet, single crochet. So let's just review uh, what you're going to have to do to go back and forth and then how many times we're, that we're going to do that. So we have ten rows to complete. We wanna do a double crochet and then a single. We wanna do that a total of five times. So a double uh, crochet row and then a single. And so you got ten rows to do. So you're just gonna go back and forth. You already know what to do at this point. So to start up the first one you gotta chain three. I've already started one and then just double crochet across and then when you get to the other side just chain up one and single crochet back and you want to see a total of ten rows complete ending on uh, row number two. Okay, so you're gonna go uh, two, three, two, three, two, three and then you'll end up with, uh, end up on row number two as your final which will be one of these double crochet rows and then we're just gonna seal off the hole uh, in the front considering the toe. So it's kind of a neat way to go. If you wanna access anything at this point um, it's not gonna be hard to access because we're not actually do going in complete circles yet but uh, when we do the final sewing you then can fill in the spaces then with your tapestry needle and etc. So please do this now this ten rows and I'll be back here in just a moment. Now I've just finished going back and forth and remember we had to do it five times and then we had to finish on row number two. So that was a double crochet row and now we're about to finish. So I'm gonna give you a, a way out just in case your counts are not gonna be right. It's always nice to have uh, choices, right? So I'm gonna show you how to finish off the toe area and uh, if your counts are wrong then 
the math won't work out but um, it's really quite easy to show you how to finish it off anyway. So uh, what we need to do is move on to the toe. So weave in your ends and let's get ready and we're going to go to the right side of the project. So at this time you can kind of really see where the right side is. Okay, it's the side that you're looking at here and what we're going to do then is just turn our work and begin to do the toe area and I want you to physically divide it in two if you want to manipulate this just in case your counts are wrong. So let me show you how to do that. So when I was last filming just a few seconds ago I told you I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system. So I wasn't sure where my counts were but I'm going to just give you a little tip. So my counts are off just by a few stitches. So the reality is here is that I just counted the number of stitches all the way across. In this case there's 38. So I wanted to have that divided by two. So in order to do that 38 I got the number 19. So what I've done is that I've counted from the first one and I've marked the 19th and then we're gonna begin the first one. So then the second part of this is that we're gonna take the next stitch and then go all the way across to the other side. So let's uh, begin and it's a really easy uh, way to go and we're gonna begin doing the toe area next. So let's begin. I'm going to show you how to do this. So we're gonna just create a slip knot first and now the first two are gonna become one stitch. So we're just gonna put through and then pull through but don't go through the first loop yet and then go through the second stitch going in. Go right up over top of the straggler and pull through and you'll have three loops on the hook. Just yarn over pull all three through three and the first two stitches just became one. So now just moving all the way across you're just gonna single crochet in each stitch. Okay and the last two stitches we're gonna do two together and the last two meaning where the stitch marker is. So what I'm showing you here is exactly what you're going to do the other side after this section is done. So you're doing the big, uh, the heel or sorry the toe kind of twice in that in that sense and then bringing it together. Again easiest way to do this kind of project without having to excessively count stuff and whatever. So you've got two stitches left so one and two. So just coming into the next stitch pull through. Next stitch after that which is the last one pull through and then pull through two. So all I need you to do is that we need you to turn and it's very very simple. You're going to chain up one, go in the first one and pull through and then go to the second one and pull through and you just did two together again and then you're just gonna go single crochet across and what do you think you're gonna do with the final two stitches? That's right you're gonna put those two together. So you're just gonna go back and forth and you're gonna do this until you physically see only three stitches left on your hook. Now you can possibly do this and uh, for example if your counts if you're manipulating stuff you could end up with four stitches whatever. You can you can kind of fake it or make it right. So this next one and the last one here is your last stitch and then turn and go back in the other way. So just chain up one, put the first two together and then go across and then single crochet the last two together. So please do this until you get to um, three stitches left. If there happens to be four because you started off with a different number than 19 or whatever or the original that it started with just fake it or make it but make sure you whatever you do you do the same to the other side so that you have balance when you go to be able to put it together. So again the final two stitches of this side just became together. So turn and you're gonna notice it's gonna get faster and faster and faster and then I'll get this done and then I'll see you as you start the other side of this in just a moment. So I just finished off this side so I'm just gonna cut my ends. I'm gonna weave them in carefully or <laughs> carefully or I don't even think that's a word um, to at the end. <laughs> so Diane's gonna be see seeing this and he says Michael just made up his own word. So we're just going to trim. So now what I want you to do starting on the right side again so you can see that we got one section done here. So we're gonna start in the stitch after this and again starting on the right side just create a slip knot here and starting in the very next stitch just join it and remember you wanna do two together to begin. So just scoop in but don't go through the first one yet and then just go to the next one scoop in and then pull through all three and then do one single crochet in each until you get to the very last one, uh, last two and then you'll put the last two together and then turn and keep on reducing just like we did on the first one and you'll do this until you get three um, stitches at the top. Again if you're going to improvise just make sure that you have the same counts on the other side. 
uh, of this because the first one is done. So please do that now and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so let's review where we are. We have our two tips done and what we're going to do is that we're gonna use the gray and then we're gonna whip stitch this together right in the front. We're then going to switch to this color here and we're gonna whip stitch the base here together. Now before you go too far, I want you before you put the next seam together which will be the last one coming up, I want you to make sure that you take a look here. Okay, so I would use the same color and just whip stitch that closed and just check the other side and you probably have the same thing. I get these on normal socks even with the uh, luminous socks. So we're gonna whip stitch together and just gonna give you a quick demonstration and I'm gonna start off with the, the gray and then I'm just gonna whip stitch and even fill in the hole here. So let's uh, do that now and I'll be right back. So to whip stitch I create a slip knot on the one side here and then I'm just gonna feed the other side onto the tapestry needle. So what I like to do is that I like to start off on the interior here. So I'm just gonna take it through to the gray only. Okay, and when I pull it through I wanna put it through that slip knot and that'll lock it into place. Okay, so just pull it through and it locks. And what you can just do is then use a tapestry needle. If you wanna do that right now it probably makes sense cause it'll be closed when you're done. So just put this side here on a tapestry needle and just weave it in and out a few of times, just three times actually. Three is the magic number for if you don't want things falling out. So just stay in the gray and just go back and forth on the inside of the sock only. Don't allow the needle to go through this work, not at this point. Okay, so you know some people don't like sewing but the reality is, is that you've done all the hard work all now for crochet so now you're on the the ending other than the cuff that has to be done yet too. So now that that's been woven in you have the regular strand in already that's already locked in and what I would do is a whip stitch with this here. You can match the stitches to each other if you want to. Kind of makes sense. So you're on this side here so just go to the gray I'm matching it and just go straight across. Okay so just straight across like that. In whip stitching what it means is that I'm gonna go back to the other side again and then just move up a little bit. Okay, go right into that like a chain work. Don't go into any spaces because that'll open up spaces. So right into the chain work I just simply just whip stitch. Okay, so it goes right up over top and then start over again on the other side. So you're just gonna follow this around until it gets to the gray and then I'll meet you there in a moment and I'll show you how to fasten off. So I'm coming near to the other side and I'm just matching it, just sandwiching things together. Um, it's a neat thing. Now chenille is kind of slippery that's why it keeps falling off my needle. So it's user error. <laughs> it's actually a different kind of needle than I'm used to and it falls out really easily. So I'm a conventional kind of crocheter. I like the, <laughs> the old fashioned stuff sometimes. So now that I've done that what I can do is that I can still see the underside. So what I would do is just take this and I would probably think about doing that when I did this here. I would just access it from the other side when I'm coming in so I can come through. So what I wanna do is take this to the back side of the work. So the, the inside of the sock and I wanna just tie, have it tie a knot. Just stay in the strands that are on the inside here so don't pop that needle out the back so that it's on the right side of the project. So now that it's got a little bit of a knot in there all I wanna just do is just take it through the gray Again just staying in the fibers on this side of the work. So and go through once and twice is not good enough yet because three is company and that's where we're gonna end. So you just go th through three times and then you'll you be good to go. So a project can never stretch in three different directions at one time and then you can just safely cut that down. So now I would want to start off then with doing the this color here and then just do that and then I would just go and secure this and then work my way up the uh, other side. So I want you to do all that now and you can see that this is looking pretty cool so far. So please continue to sew. So my stocking has now been put together and I have, you can tell which side is the right side at this point. So if you have any stitch markers you can move those out now. 
So okay, so let's begin to do the cuff. If you're not uh, comfortable with the Bernat uh, Pipsqueak here, you can use the velvet if you wish to. Just probably use the gray that you did have because you'll still have a lot left over. So coming down, I don't want you to go to the outside here because it'll kind of look obvious that it doesn't appear to be layered. So what I would want you to do, and this is kind of my own improvisation, is that I want you to put the slip knot on the hook and just go through the first double crochet on the one uh, through the loops or sorry through the post. So if you're new to crochet these are called post. So if you I'm just going through the one uh, through the one through the back. So all I'm just gonna do is just take my time and pull this yarn through but don't pull it through the first loop that's on the hook. Okay so there's actually two on there and then yarning over pulling it through the two. Leave the straggler down so that it gets stuck underneath and move to the next post. So going in and then out. Lay this down on top to get it stuck and then pull through and then pull through to your single crocheting. It's called surface overlay. Um, it really works really well so just doing that. So you see how I'm just bearing that as I going this and the nice thing about it is fuzzy. So you really can't make too many mistakes with it because you'll never see your stitch work. <laughs> which is kind of a cool thing. So now that I've buried that in enough I'm gonna get rid of this tail and all I wanna do is that I wanna go and all the way around only on the back, sorry only on the, the posts and by doing this one layer down it's gonna, it's gonna cause it to jump off the stocking just in visual. Okay. So I want you to go all the way around surface overlay single crochet and then I'll meet you back around and we're gonna stop on the last one here and then we're gonna continue then this journey. So we're, we wanna do technically 11 rows of single crochet but we need to get ourselves started which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm coming all the way around still doing my surface overlay and I wanna go into the very last post. So we're gonna sew this up later. So you're just gonna turn your work now, now you're gonna use your fingertips. If you've never used this stuff you can actually feel where the stitches are with your fingertips if you have that sensitivity and what I would do is that I'm just gonna mark off off camera with a pen is that I just did row number one as I did the surface overlay. So now I'm just gonna go back and forth on these on this and I'm just gonna single crochet back and forth a total of having 11 rows. You will not be able to count the rows. That's the beauty of this pro uh, product. It really fills in beautifully and even if you make a mistake it's pretty much, it's not impossible but it's pretty close to see your, uh, to see your mistakes. So I want you to go back and forth on this. Okay, upon designing this I've actually been on live camera and we decided that we wanted the cuff to be a little bit longer so we've made a total of 15 rows. Do you see in the light that you can actually count those? So every time you see a ridge here it's actually two rows. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen and I believe there's fifteen there. So once you get it all the way to the top here what you can just do is that you can just leave a long tail and you're gonna use that tail then to sew it together on the other side. So just leave it a long tail. Just use the same color and just feed it through. Okay and then just grab your tapestry needle and you're going to whip stitch this together. Just like this. So just coming to the other side just match them up. Okay and then just go across to the other side. Just stay on the edge because this is pips week you can hide things that are not perfect in and just jump back to the other side. So I showed you whip stitching already in this tutorial. So it's just a matter of just following through and just making sure everything lines up properly. Now when I like sewing I like sewing so the project actually um, um, faces like I come I come toward myself uh, from behind the camera here. So I just like moving my way down and just use your needle. So you're just gonna just whip stitch this together and you can just do a little handle if you want to and we'll cover that in just a moment and then I will see you back here in just a moment. The handle is only gonna be chaining of 12 and then that's kind of a nice thing to join. But we're gonna be able to fold this over and determine where we need to attach that before we continue. Okay once you're all the way down at the bottom just uh, just tie it shut and this yarn is fabulous to be able to hide in the end. So just go back and forth inside the fibers three times. So once, twice 
and three times is a charm as always. So let's uh, just fasten this off. Let's fold over a cuff and determine where we're gonna hang this. Okay, so I just folded this over so you can see how deep it goes. It's almost a thumb distance in and then folds over the top. So I like my stockings to hang so that my tip is hanging to the left. I don't know why. I just think stocks, uh, stockings look better in that direction but that's again up to you. So you want to determine that if that's, if you have a side that looks better than the other you may want to determine that when you're going to do it. So what I want to do is now that it's folded over to the top I want to use my pip squeak now and create the chain work to do that. Now pip squeak itself is not a very strong yarn so you don't want to just attach it like this and because it will snap. It's very easy to do that. So just keeping it like so, just create a slip knot and I want you just to chain a total of 12. So uh, using the five millimeter size H, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. And as soon as you have your 12, just cut this yarn now and just pull it through that other loop. Okay. So all we just have to do now is just attach it to the back side so it's gonna hang perfectly. So just put it through. You can use your crochet hook for that and just pull that part of that chain through like so. So now I want you to just tie this so that the chain lines up to each other. Okay, do you see the, th the thicker part? That's the chain work. So just tie and stop at the chain and then tie it into a knot. I'm, and for this case I would tie it one more time to do that. Then what I'm going to do is that because you've just weaved this in, pull it back so that the, t uh, the loose ends are down back at the stocking and then use your tapestry needle then to weave it into this cuff. Okay, the loose ends to do that. And that will give that extra security as well. So just going in and out of the project you can't really see it. Um, that's the great thing about this project. So once and you, you know how many to go? That's right, it's three. So once, twice, three times is a charm and I would do that with both of the tails that are hanging and therefore you have your starting loop. So please do that and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so it's now been woven in the tent ends so it's nice and secure and here we are. We have the cuff, we have it leading all the way to the top. We have the, the heel, we have it leading to the toe and you're good to go. So the only thing that we need to do now is wait for the big man to come down the chimney and this will be a fabulous Merry Christmas. So until next time have a good one and we hope to see you again right here, right here in the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. E.